going on everybody? Welcome back to another one of my videos. Back home now. It's been a couple of crazy weeks of traveling and I am finally working from home today. It feels like I haven't worked from home for a very long time. So it's been a pretty chill, fun, lazy, filled, busy day on the computer. And we really haven't talked about prep in a long time. And I know that that's what this channel is primarily about. But as I have said to you guys before that I like to show you guys all areas of my life. So that's not just fitness, that's entrepreneurship, visual, videography photography and maybe my animals every once in a while but let's let's take some time today and just talk about how prep is going everything has still been a hundred percent on point traveling is very 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 difficult but I just want to note that it is not impossible I do have some people who will say to me that traveling is very difficult and that is why they don't hit their macros and depending on what your goals are I honestly don't recommend tracking when you are traveling but if you are in full prep mode or if you have a deadline for losing weight or something like that, then yeah, do you know what? Tracking does need to be on point. You do have to make sure that you hold yourself accountable. Finding different options to hit your protein, because protein's most difficult, is very important. I honestly treated carbs and fats interchangeably when I was traveling. So by this, I mean where I honestly just hit my protein and my calories for the day versus focusing on hitting my carbs and my fats. It's very difficult to hit all three. 100% on point. So as long as you make sure that you are trying to hit your protein and your calories at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're short or over on your carbs or fats a couple of days or you if you interchange these macros for one another just to ensure that you actually hit your total caloric intake. And I did that. And as you guys saw from my last video, I hit an all-time low weigh-in of 110.4 pounds. Today, I weighed in at 110.2 pounds. So things are still on point things are all still going downhill in a good way and yeah we are it is tuesday today by the time this video is up it'll be eight and a half weeks out still gotta register and everything but things are starting to move very quickly and we are approaching the show closer and closer every single week things have been really busy in my life kyle and i have some very exciting things that we are doing things that are on its way it's starting to come together so i can't really share too too much with you guys but just keep following along for the ride. I enjoy having you guys here and I enjoy sharing this with you. It's uh it's a little bit stressful. It's very difficult when you have lots to do, but sleep is number one right now. And I think a lot of people underestimate that, is that sleep when you're in a fat loss stage is so incredibly important. We've talked about this before, you guys, and this can really result in a weight stall. So making sure that you prioritize your sleep when you are in a fat loss stage is very important, but it's very difficult for me right now when there's so much that's going on that I have to do, but that's okay, I'm not complaining. Just letting you guys know what's up. Um, training's been going pretty well. I am at still doing some strength training. Strength staying relatively the same, which is awesome. Cardio, not doing any fasted cardio. I have been prescribed 120 minutes of steady state cardio throughout the week. And I honestly am doing the elliptical and the treadmill. I am not gonna be killing myself by going on the Stairmaster for 40 minutes. I was at first, but I found that it was just super fatiguing and the whole point of cardio is to be in a caloric burn. All these people who are doing the Stairmaster and thinking that it's gonna help with their glutes or anything like that, like where they put the mini bands around their legs and they're walking up the Stairmaster, they're kicking their legs out. Yeah, it gives some activation or whatever, but activating your glutes is more of a priority when you're actually training. For me, there's no point to really be kicking my ass when it comes to cardio. So I'm honestly just taking it easy on my joints and going on the elliptical and going on an incline treadmill. And that's about it. I found last year that my joints were extremely sore when I was prepping and being on the elliptical and really kicking your, I mean, being on the Stairmaster and really kicking your ass like this is really gonna do a number on your joints. And that's not my goal right now. I'm not an endurance athlete. I'm just strictly using cardio as a tool to put myself into a further caloric deficit. So I found that it has really helped. My joints aren't killing me or anything like that as of yet. We still got a ways to go, don't we? Who? Yeah, we do, brosif. Long ways to go. Back to eating out. I had, I had some people question 
some of the food that I was eating while I was eating out and that being McDonald's and frozen meals and normally when I get into debates with people about this topic I start off by asking them questions back. I had a few people actually ask me why McDonald's and why frozen meals and I was like why not it helps me hit my macros and they're like well they're so bad for you and I always ask back I'm like okay well how are they bad for you they're like well um because it's processed or because there's high sodium in there at the end of the day yeah maybe it's not the best thing for you but there's been no literature to suggest that having it in moderation is going to kill you high amounts of sodium aren't bad like everybody seems to still believe and processed food man everything is processed even organic food is processed there has been nothing to show that organic food is more superior than non-organic aka processed food it's more important to actually hit your macros than to not eat because you aren't surrounded by healthy foods when you are traveling so many people will under eat while they are traveling or they'll just say fuck it and go eat at restaurants and be way over their caloric intake which is still not the greatest for food for you anyways so why not find options that are going to allow me to hit my macros yeah they may be a little bit more processed than what i eat on a daily basis but it actually ensures that i am 100 percent on point and i'm hitting my macros and i'm still seeing results so to each their own. I mean, hey, by all means, if you want to get a frozen cooler or a six pack bag and pack meals for five days and still be on point during prep, power to you. I've done it before. I hated it and I will never do that again. It's just not for me. I mean, I remember when Kyle and I went to Whistler back when we had our bro coach and we had to switch hotel rooms a couple of times and we had a big ass, like you can't even see it in frame. It was a big ass, like actual frozen cooler. And we brought our breakfast, lunch, and dinner for five full days to Whistler. And we weren't even prepping for a show. We were in our off season with our coach, but we were still required to stick to our meal plan. And we had to lug this giant ass cooler around along with our baggage to the other rooms. And it was, it just wasn't a good time at all. And we were in Whistler and we didn't actually enjoy being in Whistler because we didn't eat out or anything like that. The only thing that we ate out was Cajun, a Cajun chicken salad with no dressing at Earl's. And I remember the first day, no, it was the second day we were there and the waitress said that they were out of chicken. And Kyle and I looked at each other like, what the fuck do we do? They have no chicken, bro. What do we do? What do we eat? There's nothing to eat. And the level of stress and anxiety that it built on us when it was our off season and we were on vacation was just not worth it. So meal prepping when you're going out of town and bringing a giant ass cooler around isn't for me. If it's for you, whatever is gonna allow you to not be stressed out and that's gonna allow you to be on point, do it. Everybody's different. Doesn't work for me, might work for you. Overall, you guys, I just wanted to quickly sit down, discuss where I was at with you guys, just so you were aware of what was going on. And yeah, things are going really well. So my battery's about to die. I better wrap up this video, you guys. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.